On today's video, we're going to be working on this microwave. Microwave is plugged in. Every time we go to start the microwave, the breaker will pop. I have the microwave removed. This little mug that I put inside of here. Whenever you're testing or troubleshooting, you always want to have something inside of the microwave. You never want to run it dry. What we're going to do right now is we're simply just going to test it. And as soon as I do this, you'll see that the breaker will actually pop. You can see here my microwave oven. I'm going to go ahead and reset it. And we're going to go ahead and do the same thing. Set it. Unplug your microwave. I pulled the microwave down. On top, you see we have the grill cover. And what we're going to do is we're going to have to remove this grill cover. There's just going to be two screws. Go ahead and remove your grill cover and put it to the side. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and remove our panel. Just remove the one screw that secures it to the frame. We remove the screw. To remove the panel, you're going to have to open the microwave door. To remove the panel, you're going to have to push up from the bottom. And then once you push it up, you're going to have to pull it out towards you. Be careful not to pull it out all the way because you do have a wire harness here that is attached to the back of the panel. I do have a video posted on my channel if you're having issues with the fuse. Usually one of the indications that the fuse is bad is that the fuse will actually pop first before the breaker trips. So right here, uh, I do have power going to my microwave. The fuse does sit right inside of here. The, sometimes if it's a whirlpool, it'll sit right here behind the panel in the little plastic capsule. I do have videos posted on my channel if that's the issue that you're having. Because my fuse is not popped, this indicates to me that I'm having another problem. If you're unsure, for demonstration purposes, I just decided to pull uh, the front cover. What we're going to do is we're going to set our multimeter to continuity and we'll go ahead and just test the fuse. And you can obviously hear my multimeter toning and this indicates to me that I do have continuity and that my fuse is okay. We do have other components that we can look at since we have the panel already removed or the grill removed. Here we have our oven thermostat. We can test for continuity and we have here at the bottom where you see these wires tying in. You, you can see on the left side that'll be the bottom thermostat and on the right side we have the hood thermostat. Here I have my wires or my leads tying in. I'm going to remove those. I already moved this front one and then I'll test for continuity. And you can see on the side view it's sitting right on the side of the panel. As you can see here, I do have continuity. We attach my leads. At this point, we've already tested our switches. We tested our fuse. So we know we do have another problem. Before we start getting more into our tear out and testing the capacitor, the next thing we want to do is we want to test here our door switch. The door is going to have three different switches. If you look at your schematics, generally it's always going to be in the same order. So here up top, we have our primary switch. This one in the middle is going to be our monitoring switch. And here at the bottom, we have our door sensing switch. What we're going to do is we're going to remove our leads from our primary switch on our door. Just kind of push it off to the side. And now we're going to take our multimeter. I'll put one lead on the bottom, one lead on top. And I should have continuity when the door is closed. And you can see here that I do have continuity. Now I'm going to open my door, and once I open my door, I will lose continuity to my switch. I'm going to close my microwave door again, and I should have continuity. So we know at this point, our primary switch for our door is working properly. Now we're going to do the same thing with our monitoring switch. We're going to remove our leads to the switch. And now we're going to go ahead and we're going to test it. We'll put our leads on one of the prongs on each one coming out. On this one is going to be different. When the door's closed, I should not get continuity. And when I open the door, I should lose continuity. The, the, the terminology obviously is going to be uh, the switch is open or closed, but I'm trying to explain this in a way that you can just generally use your multimeter and just comprehend the testing procedure that we're doing. So right now my microwave door is in the closed position. My switch should not be giving me continuity. 
what it is. So this tells me that I do have a bad switch. Here we have a good microwave. And you can see this is my switch coming out, my monitoring switch. And I'm going to put my multimeter on it with the door closed. I should not get continuity coming out. You can see here, I am not getting continuity. Now I'm going to open the door and I should get continuity out of my multimeter. Here I have my multimeter touching the leads. You can see the microwave door is still cracked open a little bit. But once I close it, I should lose continuity. This is the one that I'm working on right now. You can see that my microwave door is closed and I'm still getting continuity. We know at this point that our mon monitoring switch is bad. We're gonna go ahead and just test our bottom switch. Here we have our door sensing switch and we have the microwave door closed. Once I open the door, I should lose continuity. Remove our wires to our door switch on the top and the bottom. We have our top switch, middle switch, bottom switch. Obviously the monitoring switch is the one we're having an issue with. If you look up here, our leads coming are black and yellow for our top switch. The black and white is going to be for our bottom switch. And our middle switch is going to be our monitoring switch, which will be our black and white. Right now we're going to remove our door switch. We're going to basically remove these two screws that secure our door switch to the side of our panel. To remove the screws, you should basically pull this back. Be careful when you're removing it. You do have wires exposed. You don't want to cut any of your wires. This is the schematics. And you can see here on the side, you have your primary door sensing and monitoring interlock. And basically these are the tests for continuity. It tells you how it should look with the door um, when it's closed, the readings and the doors open. And these are just, just a schematic that you can have and refer back to. If you want, you can kind of just test it yourself without your multimeter since we have it disconnected. And you can hear whenever I engage this, you hear the switching. Here, we'll do the same thing. There's the switch right there on the side. This is going to be our monitoring switch. This is the one that's bad. You can see the switch is right here on the bottom. You see here when I engage it with my screwdriver, it's not making any clicking noise. So I'm pushing it in. I'm not getting anything. No clicking. Obviously the continuity test is gonna be what you're using. This is just kind of for you to kind of get an idea. This is going to be my replacement switch. Got my clicking there. A new monitoring switch. So here I have my replacement switch. This is going to be uh, just a switch that I had laying around my shed from another microwave that was good. But if you only wanted just to replace just the switch itself, you can remove them individually. If you look here on the back, this is my monitoring switch. There's a kind of like a little side pin that goes into the switch. And what I'll do is just, just take a screwdriver and kind of just wedge it out and that will allow the switch to pull out. You're just taking your screwdriver and pushing this to the side. As you're doing that, you're slowly, gently pulling out the switch. You can see right here, this is the switch. To put your switch back in, you're gonna take your screwdriver, kind of wedge that little black clip to the side and then slide your switch back in. Now we're ready to install our switch. Here, obviously you have your switch on the top and your two on the bottom and you have these little clips right here. So you're gonna insert it and your little clips are gonna come into the side of the panel. Again, be very gentle. You do have wires, don't force. Once you have it in there, just make sure your, your clip is inside of the pr provided slot. And now we're gonna re-secure it with our screws. Now we're going to reconnect all of our switches and the harnesses. Now that we have all three connected, we're going to go ahead and just reassemble our microwave and then test. Just make sure that everything is tied in nice and tight in the back of your panel. 
microwave. As I said, I do have a mug inside of there. If you can see it kind of reflecting with water filled up inside of it. And now we're going to go ahead and test our microwave. If this video was a help, if it was informational, please subscribe.